Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at choosing landmarks, identifying them, and of course uh, picking out which ones are going to be the best and worst if you're trying to do traditional visual flight rolls navigation. Now keep in mind, uh, many pilots uh, love that magenta line of safety, but we've disabled it for this scenario just for the purposes of being able to sort of figure out what you would do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look out the window for a moment and uh, just give you just a few moments to go ahead and absorb anything that you can see that seems to be an identifiable terrain feature. I'm even going to make it easy for us. I'm actually going to pause for half a moment there just to give you a chance to go and take a look really quick look around and see what things you can immediately identify and things are like oh I could probably tell you what that is or where it could be now for the purpose of this I'm not going to zoom in it's uh, kind of interesting because in the real world I actually carry binoculars with me which makes it a little bit easier for me but the cool thing with the binoculars is the plane is in a very stable platform so it's very very difficult very very awkward to go ahead and actually use them for that purpose so again I'm just going to go ahead and do a very dramatic slow pan here and give you plenty of time to try to identify any landmarks that we could use for navigation here before we actually open up a chart and see exactly where we are and what kind of landmarks we could be utilizing for this particular purpose. All right, did you have an opportunity? Well, let's see if you can see the same ones that I noticed when I was looking at the window. The first one I noticed was this north-south running highway. So actually not just a north-south running highway, it's actually a northeast facing highway. And I noticed there's a very long straight section of this, which is very useful. Uh, the second thing I observed uh, when I was looking at this window here is the presence of this large lake down here in my bottom left corner. This was actually a rather tricky one to notice, but I also noticed that it is parallel and actually facing the same general direction as my northeast road to my left. Good to know. Uh, the next thing I noticed, again, I'm not cheating by zooming here, is I noticed there is a mountain range. And uh, this mountain range is uh, rather challenging to see. But if you look very carefully, uh, when the houses start to disappear and things get uh, really forested, if you notice the forest gets a little dark here, uh, that's usually a good indicator that you're dealing with a range. And you can actually see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven peaks all kind of are running down there like that. Uh, next thing I noticed is I noticed a fairly large town that was right along the water, which I have uh, located right here in this particular position. Uh, the reason I noticed that, of course, is again, less green, more or white. So of course, when everything's white, when you're in the snow, let me just show you how just frustrating I can get for you. If I were to go ahead and create the snow depth and crank it up, you'll see that that no longer helps us very much. So it's uh, very important to see both of those. Now, the other thing we're going to notice as I turned my head gently over here is I noticed the presence of an airport. I just zoomed in a little bit and cheated there, but it is uh, kind of helpful. But you probably noticed the distinctive uh, running rat, bunny rabbit here uh, going up towards a runway. Uh, the other thing I noticed about that runway is it's about the same heading that we're traveling on. So that is another key piece of evidence that we can utilize for our particular trying to figure out where we are. Continuing my journey to the right, I noticed the presence of a massive, massive, massive body of water. It was a big old, uh, you know, that's a pretty heavy duty river there. The thing is a pretty substantial. But I also notice there was a bridge that was crossing that particular location. Now, some of you are probably saying, hey, that's cheating. Uh, you, you just moved your head. You didn't do that when you gave us the challenge. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. But the other thing you probably noticed is the path that those highways were taken. You can also see one, two, three, four, five ridge lines. Now, has your brain got all that? Your brain's got it? You're feeling pretty comfortable? You're feeling pretty good? You're ready to go put this one all together? Well, let's go get the sectional chart out and see if you can figure it out. All right, here's the general region. Uh, this is our sectional chart for this particular zone here. And um, taking a look at this, uh, we immediately have one thing that we can identify. Uh, we can identify there's a bunch of lakes here. Those are very large lakes. Uh, the one thing we do notice, though, is the presence of this very, very, very large river. The, the Hudson River is uh, just sort of chilling there. And the other thing we probably noticed that when we were looking around is the presence of all sorts of other components. We noticed that there was an airport that was a cross shape and then it had a northeast and a southwest facing runway. I actually shut off the weather level for just a second here to make it a little bit simpler for us and see if you can look around on the chart and see if there are any airports that are most likely towered that have what we need. Ah, there's one right here. Let's take a look at this. Bradley National Airport. So it's got roughly a northeast setting, but it's nowhere near and it's actually on the other side of a major river. Oh, that's not our winner right there. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Taking a peek around. Again, it's going to be a towered airport. Towered, ah, Stewart Air Force Base. Let's take a look here. Uh, Stewart, rather. Um, nope, that is a, not a northeast. It's also on the west side of the major river. Ah, no good for us as well. We're going to take a look around. Were there any more of the blue airports? Ah, Waterbury, Oxford. No, it doesn't look good. That one's facing more north, northwest there. Danbury, mm, not quite what we need. Oh, oh, what's this? Poughkeepsie. Hmm. So I can see here we have roughly a northeast one. We also have a perfect cross for a runway and the presence of a rotating beacon. And it is on the east side of one of the major rivers. Let's go back to the sim and take another look. Ah, take a look at that. Definitely exactly what we're looking for here. We notice that the longer runway is the one that's facing northeast. We also can see that it is just to the east of a oh, nice little river here. This is the Hudson River. 
And now we can also see the, actually the presence of other things we didn't see, such as stacks, uh, we got a whapping of falls. And remember that bridge that I was talking about? Notice that bridge is highly highlighted. Uh, that's a technical term, by the way, that I just invented. Located on our map, so uh, when we actually do take a look out that window, you can see that it is a double span bridge. And it makes it very clear and very obvious that that's exactly what that is. Now, one of the things that we noticed earlier is we noticed the presence of all of those mountains that were over there on our west. So let's go ahead and I'll pop back onto a normal view here, and I'll go ahead and take a look at those. Remember these guys right here that we were noticing a few minutes ago? Well, if we take a look on our chart real quickly, we'll notice that one of them has a maximum altitude of about 1247, and then we have another one. There's actually a whole group of these that is bisected by a road that we can roughly see here. We actually have a series of these. Now, when I talk about what landmarks work best and what landmarks don't work, some of the worst landmarks are typically actually mountains, especially ones that are buried. However, ridges are very effective. And we actually notice here by following along this line here, this ridge shape that is parallel to our river shape, we're able to actually not identify the individual mountains, but we're actually able to identify the presence of a ridge. Identifying the presence of a ridge is a really critical component. Now, one of the things you probably also noticed when we were looking around there is we had that little lake. And I want to zoom in a little bit. Now, we can see that we do have a lake that is perfectly parallel to the highway that is facing roughly north and south. Now, if you remember, when we were looking out our window there, we can actually see it's not so much the shape of the lake, because the shape of the lake, it's, eh, it's a fairly fairly decent connection. It's the orientation to another landmark, which is going to be another important component whenever you're trying to identify landmarks from the air. Now, let's see some other things. Did you notice this airport? Well, if we take a very close look, do you see it? Now, one of the challenges is that whenever you're doing small airports is uh, being able to see them. A lot of times these little airports will blend themselves in pretty aggressively. And obviously the two grass fields, uh, we had no chance in the universe of actually identifying. So you can see here that unfortunately, uh, this is just not going to do us any good. What about this major road? Yeah, anytime you have a double lined thick road on a chart, that's usually a pretty good indication of something. You'll notice it also mentions something about a power plant. We're right here, by the way. On uh, that power plant, uh, I don't think we're ever going to be able to see that power plant. So it would be very difficult to identify. What about those large bodies of towns? Ah, we see not only do we have ourselves a large body of towns, but theoretically there is a bridge that crosses here. Uh, we probably wouldn't be able to see that depending on the visibility today. But we would know, of course, that this is what we're dealing with based on the rough shape and presence of it only on one side of the particular river. One of the critical things, and I'll go ahead and I'll swing us back over to the flight sim real quickly here, and whenever you're operating for anything where you're going to be doing visual, is to always have more than one way to verify the position of a landmark. Let me show you what I mean. Take our airport again, for instance. The one method that we were able to identify it as an airport is just the presence of these lights and the fact that it's got the crossing runways. The reason we were able to identify it as being the airport that we're most likely interested in was its relationship to another easily identifiable landmark, as well as its orientation. Now, the other thing we saw, too, was this town. We knew that it would be on the east side of a very large lake. We also noticed the presence of this little squiggly bit here that's existing, as well as the presence of this bridge, which is much easier to see here. Swinging over to our lovely highway here. The highway itself doesn't do us any good unless we have something to compare it to elsewhere. Uh, for example, we've got this little tiny lake right here. Probably not the most effective way to identify where along this highway we are, or if we're dealing with the correct highway. But the fact of the matter is that we know that there is this highway that is exactly across from the river, exactly across from our town here, makes it simpler to identify. And if you also remember from our chart here, there was a double peak, which we can actually identify right here as being lined up with those three points. So it's not one point we're looking for. It's actually three points to be able to correctly identify that we have the proper landmark that we're actually looking for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fast forward time again a little bit as we make our way to our destination and see if you can identify things when they get a little less civil. Ah, now we can see that things have gotten a little more complicated. By civilized, I mean simply less houses in population. This is a little more challenging. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, slowly rotate my head here and just give you an opportunity to see if there's anything jumping out at you that you could use for the purposes of a landmark. Keep in mind, in the real world, we're moving all the time, so we can't cheat like this. Anything coming out at you? It's all the way out our windows here. All right. Let's go ahead and see if you can find where we are on the chart. Maybe if I put them both side by side, you'll be able to have a better shot at it. 
hmm, what is identifiable? What is identifiable? So as you can see, this has gotten a lot more challenging of an exercise here. Now, the reason for, of course, is that that beautiful north-south flowing Hudson River has become a little less useful to us. Even though we know it's there, we know we're on the right side of it because this is where we need to be for our particular flight. It is much, much harder to identify any sort of usable landmarks here. Uh, some of you may immediately identify there's a creek here. Oh, that creek would be very difficult to see in the real world. Uh, some of you might notice some farmlands, individual farms. Not going to be the easiest things to identify. Uh, some of you might have picked up on this uh, double highway here. Uh, this is not bad, but again, it's north-south, so we don't know where we are on it. We'd have, we know we're supposed to be on this side of it, but again, that gives us a 15-mile range here and which side we could be on. And then as you probably looked around, you probably got a good look at that mountain range on our right-hand side. Let's take a closer look at that mountain range real quickly here and see if there's a way that we can maybe identify where we are by looking at it. So coming down here real quickly, I'm just taking a look. Uh, let's see here. So we know that there are some lakes on this mountain. Uh, that makes our lives a little bit simpler. Um, other things we know, of course, there's a compass in the way going down here. Pretty bumpy. Um, individual mountains, not so much, but we know that there's a peak located somewhere among these mountains. And that peak is going to be this chap right here. We can actually see an even bigger peak way off there in the distance. Now, the peak is actually surprisingly useful to us So when we go to go ahead and open up our chart one more time. So opening it up as well, uh, we're taking a look here, trying to find a fairly tall set of mountains here with a pretty significant peak. And again, looking through, we've got some airports here. Well, we haven't identified them. We know we're probably somewhere in this general region here, just trying to get a feel for where that particular zone is. And how are we going to find that peak? Let me give you a tip. Do you see the MEAs here with the minimum en route altitudes? When that number gets big, that means you're close to a mountain peak. It's just a dumb trick, but it actually works really well. So there's a couple things I pick out right away. One thing I notice is uh, coming over here to my 3,000 footer, we have a peak here that is 944 feet. However, we have a peak that is 2,252 feet. And uh, the other thing is we know that this is within a range because if you actually take a look at it carefully, remember those two lakes that we saw that were sitting on top of that mountain peak, the ones that we see over here on the right? You could actually locate those visually right there. And by following the peak this way, we're able to locate the highest point on it, which is our lovely little point right there, chilling, which means that peak that we have, I'll move my head just a little bit, this guy is this guy, which makes it easier for us. And of course, we would also know that there'd probably be a small airport on the other side. Not the easiest thing to see. Now, another thing you probably observe when you're looking around very carefully is you probably had a pretty good look at some lakes over here. You probably noticed we had a lake here, here, and here, and your brain immediately started going to work trying to identify which one of those series of lakes that it is. And one of the things you probably also notice is you're not going to have an easy time of it. Uh, we can see very clearly you've got kind of this uh, little lung-looking lake over here. Is that the lung-looking lake? Is this the streamy lake? Again, I'm cheating a little bit by using zoom here. Um, is it further down? I mean, is this little kidney lake over here going to be that? There's a ridge. And the reality is, unless it's directly on our flight path, it's going to be very challenging to identify. And I can see very, very clearly here that that just does not help us. The other problem you're going to be having with this is you probably are starting to observe. It is very, very challenging to orient your brain in such a way that makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So one of the tricks that I like to do, and this works great in the real plane, is I will actually orient my entire chart. Here's our flight path, by the way. So I'm going to grab my chart here. And again, every tool is a little different as far as how you want to grab this. So I can grab this one like this. And you can actually rotate the entire chart so that it makes more sense to what you're actually doing. And there we go. Not the prettiest way to rotate it, but by doing so, it makes everything make much more sense visually to our airplane. So for example, remember those lakes a few minutes ago that we couldn't quite identify with the correct position was? Now we know that they're going to be facing away from us rather than having to do that complex rotation in our brain. Remember, we've got enough work to do as a pilot. We don't need to make more work for us. But the cool thing here is we know that we're going to be somewhere inside of this particular area because of the presence of that. Remember that two-lane or highway that we saw before? Without something to cross it with, we're never going to be able to identify exactly where we are. We notice there's another set of power lines, but power lines are actually not the best targets. But we do know that that peak crossing where the uh, lake um, that place is tells us we need to be between these two positions here for the purposes of identifying where we go. Uh, the other thing we probably notice is that series of lake goes away from us and the closer two lakes should be next to each other. And we can see by poking our heads back out the window there that we can actually identify where that is, especially in the presence of that other component there. So I'm going to look outside this window. We're going to try to find that highway. Ah, there's that highway. So theoretically here, if we were doing a proper navigation, we know that we need to be between this highway 
and this position. So we can actually estimate where those two different points are and actually generate a rough bearing of where everything needs to be. One of the things I observe here is it seems a little bit closer to the highway based on my original chart than I am to that mountain peak, which means from a navigational perspective, not only am I just southwest of it, but I also know that I'm probably drifting a little bit to the west as I'm continuing my journey in this general direction. Now you're probably saying, well, this isn't too bad. I think I, I kind of get the feel for it. I see what you mean by having to have more than one bearing. Let's go ahead and unpause time for a second here. And now we're gonna go speed up time actually. One, two, three, give it a quick three taps here, kind of get us going just a little bit. I'll fast forward and now we're just gonna show you how challenging it is to be able to identify these different components. Again, a minute ago, we showed you the actual path that we're taking here to give you an idea of what it is you're trying to identify. I'll go ahead and grab that path one more time here. Go ahead and zoom out. There we go. And you can see exactly what this is going to be when you are trying to navigate along it. Now, the nice thing here is our destination is actually already visible. And now you can see we got these two large lakes right here. These would be very readily identifiable lakes without having to do any work on our part. The other thing is we'd know that those two lakes would be past that massive peak that we saw over there in the east. Uh, continuing our journey down this way, oh, we can see a bunch of individual lakes. We can see a bunch of different pieces. One thing we have in the real world that you don't see here is the presence of ski slopes. Uh, ski slopes are your best friend. Friends, uh, they will definitely allow you to see exactly where you need to go. We'll go ahead and slow down time one more time. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different tools that you have at your disposal for the purposes of identifying things. So when you're trying to pick out what kind of waypoints should I use, or what kind of landmarks should I use on when I'm flying an airplane, here will be my suggestions. Major airports, uh, especially ones with defined crossing runways. Cities and towns, um, it is very easy to see where there's a city or town by the presence of a change in terrain. Highways and railroads. Uh, railroads, in my opinion, are very challenging, but large, heavy-duty, very obvious airports and runways, uh, not just those, highways, will enable you to identify. Small stuff like this, you can have a really tough time, but large stuff like this highway, this north-south one, makes it much simpler. Lakes and reservoirs are very effective if cross-referenced. Don't rely on your brain's ability to be, aha, this looks like a dumbbell lake. Don't think you're going to be able to identify that there could be visibility issues. There could be other problems. You need to be able to cross-reference it with something else that you're looking at. Uh, mountain peaks. Uh, mountain peaks were pretty useless for us when there's mountains, but when they were very useful for us when they could be identified as part of a group that is sticking out from the existing terrain. This is very useful to us. Now, if you want to have a little more work for yourselves, of course, you have streams. Uh, streams are very challenging to identify from the air. Even looking out here, trying to get a feel for where could there be a stream. We know that the down here, you can actually see it's a wetland down there, but it's, it's basically, you're never going to be able to identify where you are without some kind of cross-reference. Next item is small airports. Uh, one of the things that we probably noticed during our journey here is we've crossed no more than about, I think it's at nine or 10 individual small airports. Have you seen any of them so far? Hills and ridges. If something is just a straight blah, 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 like this, we're never, that's a technical term, we're never going to be able to identify specifically what mountain it is. However, with something else to use, we can go ahead and identify it. Another one is going to be power lines and wind farms. Uh, power lines are very, very tricky to spot from the air. Uh, the nice thing that power lines do do is they actually cut through, oh, there's a ski slope right there, by the way, very obvious. Um, the nice thing about power lines is they tend to cut through terrain. So you can see things like this to identify, but you need to cross them with something to identify where you are on them. Now, when you want really bad landmarks, I'll tell you what those are gonna be. Grass runways, you're never gonna find them without something else. Specific buildings, um, you just can't see them from these kinds of altitudes. Uh, sparse vegetation areas, these are gonna be zones like this. Good luck finding what specific farm you're looking for. And of course, isolated rocks or anything that looks like it's supposed to be really, really small. Keep in mind in the summer season, this is going to be a very different experience than when it's going to be in the winter season. As a matter of fact, I'll go flip that snow back on real quickly here. And you can see just how different things can be. But the good news is things like lakes become very visible in flight sim. In the real world, they could be covered with snow and very hard to find. Enjoy.